We'll be in uh, Romans, the third chapter this morning, uh, verses 25 through 26. It says, Whom God hath set forth, as talking about Jesus, to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now this morning we're talking about God setting forth Christ. He has set him forth where all men can see him. Like the serpent that was raised up in the wilderness, he's, he's available to everybody. Now there, there's not one person on the face of this earth who can say, God didn't make a provision for me. God didn't set forth Christ to where I could reach him. No, God had set him forth. To, and he has set him forth to be a propitiation. Now this is a word that you aren't going to be able to understand via the dictionary. This is a, a Bible word. And in fact, when you go to look it up, a lot of the dictionaries define it as the act of propitiating or something that propitiates. Which, I mean, that really clears it up, you know. But the, the, the word from which it's translated, and I knew this before, but uh, Brother Robert really brought it out on this last uh, table in the wilderness. It's, I, I believe it's hilasterion. I don't, I'm not sure if that's how you say it. But it's, it's actually the same word that is translated to refer to the mercy seat which covered the Ark of the Covenant. And it's, it's, it means a covering. It's, it's a covering of favor or a covering of protection. Amen. And we notice that God didn't say that he had set him forth to propitiate. Uh, not, he didn't say that he had set him forth to do the work of propitiation, but he had set him forth to be a propitiation. That is that the focus isn't on the work that he was going to do, but that the very fact that he is our salvation, that he is our propitiation. Uh, uh, the truth is that no one can benefit from the protection which this, this propitiation provides you unless you are in the place where the covering is. The, the truth is you can't receive the atonement that Christ has made unless you are in Him. Uh, the salvation of God is a, um, it's exclusive to those who have been buried into His death and those who have been raised to life in His resurrection. And this is exactly the context in which we're coming to this table this morning. We, we recognize that there is no other fount open for cleansing. Now what did the hymn writer say? He says, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we recognize that this morning, that we have come to partake of, of his flesh and his blood. See, we, we haven't been offended at the saying of Jesus. We didn't know, we're not no longer walking with him when, when he, he said, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drinketh his blood, we have, you have no life in you. We, we have accepted that, and that's why we're coming to the table this morning. Now, just as the Levitical system of sacrifice, the blood of the sacrifice has to be applied in the proper way for the atonement to, to, to be effective to you. You know, he had to come in the holy place and they had to put the blood on the horns and they had to sprinkle, sprinkle the blood. And, and in the deliverance of the uh, children of Israel from Egypt, they had to put it on the doorpost. It had to be applied. Uh, this, this blood of Christ has got to be applied to you if it's going it's to have its work in you. Now, he has set him forth to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Now, uh, I used to, th to uh, have a m misunderstanding about this text. I used to think that he's talking about Christ's righteousness and that his righteousness is what made the remission of sins. But that's, that's not what he's talking about here. That, that God's own righteousness in forbearing these sins that were in the past, he's now justified by the sacrifice of Christ. Yeah. And we're seeing in this that divine forbearance isn't an end of itself. It, 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 by, ne it, by necessity, it can't continue forever. Uh, people have to be brought to a place where God can look at them and it not cause them to, Him to move in anger against them. Amen. Now, I want to look at this text in Acts. Um, it's the 17th chapter, verses 30 and 31. He says, In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereby he hath given assurance to all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Now there was a sense in which in past times God purposed himself in, to not look upon the wickedness of man, so, so that his anger wouldn't wax hot against them. But he did this in... in uh, um, looking forward to the sacrifice of Christ. 
it, it appears in the world that men are simply just getting away with being wicked. But, but this isn't the case. Yeah. In, in, in this situation, it actually, it actually created an occasion which the wicked one might be able to have some kind of an accusation. You know, the, the angels, when they sinned, they were brought down instantly and without mercy. But it seems that in, in the world when men sin, they're not instantly judged. They're not instantly brought to, to judgment for what they did. But uh, in, in eternity, obviously, God's purpose has been purposed from the foundation of the world. So although it's not apparently, it wasn't apparently seen at the time, he had already made a provision for this. That's why it was right for him to wink at these, at these transgressions. And we see God's association with holy men in the past, like King David and Moses and Samuel and all these people. This is why he was able to consider them righteous in their own generations. Because although Christ hadn't come yet, they lived by faith. It, 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 was, by, it was a different dynamic, but it was the same thing, that they, they lived by faith in their generations. Uh, the, I mean, the curse of the sinful nature applied to them just as it did as anyone else. And they, they may have had individual circumstances in their lives where they did what was unfavorable in the sight of God. But in the, the Spirit, as he writes these men up in Scripture, we don't, we don't have them uh, spoken unfavorably of. And this, this is the reason, because they, they serve God. Now, to, it say, he says, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. He's talking about God's righteousness again. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Now, in, in purposing to redeem mankind, we see that God wasn't primarily concerned with the rescue and retrieval of mankind. I mean, this, this was part of it. Um, but rather, he's more concerned with showing and making manifest his righteousness in the retrieval. To show his excellence, how even in the most seemingly impossible circumstances, he's able to make the vilest man clean and stand in his presence. He's able to do that. Yet simultaneously, he's, he's, he can retain his own holiness. Only God could do this. Uh, men are prone to say in their purposes that the ends justify the means. You know? That they can use an otherwise unacceptable means because in the end it'll all be justified. Everything that we did that was wrong, it'll be okay because the end's worth it. But that, that's not how God's purpose is. He had to do it righteously. He can't justify men without retaining his own justice. Now the truth is that God needed Jesus just, just as well as we did. He, he's a savior to us, but he is God's Christ. So, brethren, as, as we come this morning, let's labor to um, keep ourselves under this protection which we've been cri provided in Christ Jesus. Let's, let's uh, labor to, uh, par let's, let's partake of the bread and the cup this morning, thankfully, uh, recognizing that God has made this way that we can be justified and uh, um, wanting to be fellow workers with him in this, that uh, as he is justifying us, as he is glorifying us more into the image of his son, that this, this is glorifying him as well. Let's pray, brethren.